Can I hook you up? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I got paprika, I got fennel, I got sitar. You want it? I got it. I'll take some sitar and, uh, oh, yummy saffron. <laughs> oh, a man with expensive taste. <laughs> I keep that in a special pocket. $900 cash. $900. Spice was gonna cost me an arm and a leg. An arm and a leg? I got that too. What? Hey, I'm in too deep, Alan. I'm in too deep. Last time. I have to make sure all of this falls into place. The bakers flipped out. Whoops. I was hoping this would be my good side. For old school week. I just think it's like the epitome of kitsch. Loic pulled ahead of the pack. Loic, how can you get that done so fast? He's a marvel. And claimed star baker. I'm so oh, proud of you. While Kathy missed the mark. I'm panicking. And had to say goodbye. I'll let the kids take it from here. Now. Oh, hi. It's a float or sink test. Things get spicy. First ever spice week. As the bakers soak in a cheesy signature. This is the frantic part. <gasps> Bring the heat for a tasty technical. <laughs> it is very spicy. My lips are on fire. And summon their inner architects. Such a hot mess. Wow. In an ambitious showstopper. Okay, you for 10 bakers in the tent, there's only five of us left. I really have to up my game and deliver something amazing. Each week it's a little touch and go, but uh, I'm still here. I think anything's possible now. Spice is a very foreign thing to me, so competition is gonna be fierce today. Morning, bakers, it's the quarterfinal. And our very first Spice Week. So, time to bring it and say boo bye to Bland. We begin with a signature challenge that is a modern take on a classic, Ras Malai Cake Slices. Traditional Ras Malai is a popular South Asian dessert made of flattened balls of chenna. Fresh cheese. Soaked in malai. A dairy mixture. And spiced with cardamom, saffron, rose, and pistachio. This very trendy adaptation brings all the components of traditional Ras Malai into cake form. And remember, bakers, it's spice week, not boring week, so give it all you got. You have two hours on the clock. On your marks. Get set. Bake. <laughs> I'm excited for Spice Week. It's going to be tasty. It's a real opportunity to share a lot more flavors than I've shown before. Are you the type of spice person that takes it all out of the jars, put it in your own I little do. jars? You do? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's the Ecuador final, and it's our first ever Spice Week. Sorry, sorry. Spice is life. Spice is love. If there is no spice, there is no love, and there is no life. My mother is English, so spice is something I encountered <laughs> as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> Ras Malai cake is a newly conceived dessert. It has an eggless sponge added to absorb all that beautiful Malai flavor. We're asking our bakers to show us their version, something that is definitely spice forward, and of course, it has to be absolutely delicious. It reminds me of tres leches a bit, um, like a soaked cake, but I think tres leches is like more soaked, less spices though. <laughs> Right now, I am working on my sponge. It's an eggless sponge. Okay. I made it a lot because I had a lot of difficulties <laughs> nailing it. <laughs> eggless sponges give Russ Malai cakes a solid structure that is still moist. Hopefully. It's not going to be a pancake. <laughs> Yogurt. A very scientifically measured. I'm making a pistachio cardamom nutmeg sponge. It's a chocolate sponge that also has a bit of cinnamon and clove as well. I'm making a crab apple sauce spice cake. And where did you get those uh, crab apples? I kind of stole them a little bit from a tree down by the river. Yeah, <laughs> a few your neighbors on West Joshua. Sure. <laughs> Heather's crab apple cake and filling will combine with chenna ginger buttercream and a malai flavored with a spice blend she thought she'd invented. So I was playing around and I came up with this amazing combination with like fennel and star anise and cloves and I accidentally reinvented Chinese five spice. <laughs> well, someone like 6,000 years ago made this up already. <laughs> Bake evenly, please. Great, because there's nothing else I can do. See you in a bit. I am going to start my milk soak because I want to have it ready when the cake comes out of the oven. The milk soak is an essential component. 
It's just condensed milk, Chinese spice spice, and maple syrup. But the bakers can break from tradition with their spices. So the main flavors are really um, masala chai, like ginger, cardamom, vanilla. Andre, you want to taste this real quick? This is your soak? Yeah. I get clove, but that's it. Yeah, clove is it. OK. It's missing cayenne. Hey, uh... Good morning. How's it tasting? I feel like it's not spicy enough. Oh, do you like heat? I like the flavor of it, but I'm really bad at it. Well, we got to train you up. My this hope. is the perfect week for that. I know. <laughs> Cloves, cinnamon, and a hint of cayenne will spice up Camila's Ras Malai spin on Colombian hot chocolate. Back home, we put cheese inside hot chocolate. Really? So you replace marshmallow with cheese? Yeah, it's delicious. I can't wait to try this. I, I want to go home <laughs> and just start putting cheese in all my hot chocolates. OK. I'll get started on uh, the chenna, which is uh, the cheese component. Soft, crumbly chenna is the center point of traditional Ras Malai. Oh, this is nice and warm. <laughs> Do you make a lot of cheese? <laughs> Not very often. Not no. very often? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I would like to make more cheese in the future. It's like in my French DNA, I guess. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my particular recipe is I let the milk come to a boil, and then I add the lemon juice and just let it sit for a few minutes. Candace. Hello. What are you making right now? I'm making some cheese. Making cheese. Because why not? You look pretty comfortable doing this. Have you done it before? I've made paneer at yeah. home, and this yeah. is very similar. Well, you don't look stressed at all, yeah. so. It's like all a right. lie. <laughs> Candace will incorporate her chenna into a pistachio mascarpone cream and combine it with a vanilla clove cake and a soak based on a family favorite, masala chai. It's part of our picnics and stuff that we do in the summer. Play bingo when we have masala tea. That's what I want to share today. <sighs> That's harder than folding the fitted sheet. Once the chenna is strained through a cheesecloth... My chenna's ready. It's tightly tied and left to rest until the water completely drains out. Would you believe that six liters of milk got transformed into that? <laughs> it's a lot of milk, but not that much cheese. <laughs> Lobic will pair three layers of spiced cake with orange blossom chenna and a soak based on horchata a Mexican drink made of rice, milk, and cinnamon. My partner made me discover horchata a couple years ago, and it just takes me back to trips in Mexico we've done together. Oh, boy, that's not happened before. Whew. Please cool down. Sugar and spice make Ras Malai nice. Bakers, you have one hour left. This is my cranberry and apple filling. I am making a little glaze. It has a little bit of cayenne and chili, just to uh, give a little kick. I've flavored my pastry cream with saffron. It gives like a, a floral note. I want to make sure it gets set up so that it holds up the cake nicely. Andrew's saffron pastry cream will pair with a pistachio, nutmeg, and cardamom cake and a raspberry chenna cream. Thinking about this raspberry, does it overshadow some of the other? Because yeah. you've got delicate spices. I, I'm trying to keep the raspberry also very delicate. Mm -hmm. It's also, I like it for the color. Yes, but you don't want to sacrifice flavor for no, visual. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, totally. I'm tempering my chocolate. I might make some mugs to go around my cakes, but we'll see. I'm going to attempt something called faluda, which is okay. like an agar-agar-based jelly, but milk jelly. Yeah. A little bit more of a taste from home and from my past. Once their chenna sets up, be kind. the bakers can use it any way they choose, be that whole. This cheese is actually going to be poached in orange blossom. Or as an ingredient. Now I'm just mixing it into my buttercream, sort of like a version of a cream cheese frosting, but it's really rich. I'm putting together my pistachio mascarpone chenna whip. <laughs> we don't know what to call it, just call it a whip. <laughs> Bakers, you have 20 minutes left. All the components have been made, so I'm cutting out my pistachio sponge. Well, everything's ready to go. It's just cutting an assembly. Right. But assembly is the trickiest bit. But everything seems to be ready, and it's just a matter of Wham, bam, thank you. Do you want to try? Cake! Right now, I am adding my soak. This is the malai. This is what's really bringing the horchata flavor into my bake. I have to force the soak in a little bit more. My pastry cream set up, Camilla. Yes! Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, God. 
I'm running out of time to be too careful. Oh my gosh. Surprise. <laughs> You're literally making the mugs. Wow. Bakers, you got five minutes. This is the frantic part that I used to enjoy watching. <laughs> and we are stacking. Oh, I'm gonna die now, probably. Stay, stay. Uh, oh my god. These are finishing touches. These are standing up straight. <gasps> Get my soak in the mug. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Hands off your Russ Malai cakes. Yay! Great job, bakers! <laughs> and you're de-chocolated. <laughs> The judges are looking for elegant Ras Malai cake slices with sturdy, well-soaked sponges, smooth chenna, and spice-forward flavors. They're exquisite. <laughs> Thank you. We should all talk softly right now. <laughs> They're just so delicate. I feel like I should eat these with my pinkies up. <laughs> I mean, the cream on the top, beautiful flow, beautiful piping. Thank you. And the milk soak is a masala chai. It is just like a perfect cup of chai. Thank you. It's very complex in terms of flavors, yet there is this beautiful lightness to it. I have a new favorite thing, <laughs> um, and it's Paluta. <laughs> it just dances. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just look at your apple blossoms. Great piping skills. And your crab apple filling, it's very nice, very tart, but it does lack some of the spices we're looking for. Okay. The soak is only on the bottom layer, I not the top layer? I only did it on layer. the bottom. The top is quite a bit drier than the bottom. I think if that soak had been in that top layer, then we would have had more spice blending. Well, you got a beautiful shine on the glaze. Nice piping. Beautiful colors. Thank you. Almost look consistent. There's a few are a bit shorter than others. Yes, this one did a front flip before arriving in the plate. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> the chana, we're looking for something that's smoother. The cake texture is wonderful, but it's overly orange flavored. You feel a bit of heat from the spices toward the ends, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm not really getting that cardamom. Okay. It's very playful. <laughs> I just love how the channel works as marshmallow or cheese on top. There is a lot of work here if you include the chocolate tempering. That being said, there's some cups here where we've had a little damage. Yes. It does definitely remind me of a hot chocolate. I love the cloves in there, and I think you got the heat level just right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Andrew helped me out a lot with the tasting. <laughs> well done, Andrew. <laughs> I love how the colors capture the flavors. You know what you're going to be hitting. And they all look consistent. Well, Andrew, this is very good. <laughs> <laughs> all the flavors complement each other. It just flows through beautifully. We were concerned that the raspberries would be overpowering, mm -hmm. but the chenna and the buttercream perfectly balances with the raspberry. Delicious. Awesome, thank you. You ever taste something so good you want to curse? <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Maybe I just needed the slow burn. Now I, I seem to have some momentum. <laughs> it went really well. It was definitely a big boost, and I need all the confidence I can get going into the technical. Bakers, we're going from mild to hot for round two of Spice Week, your technical challenge. Judges, any suggestions on how the bakers can keep their cool? Brave the heat, but don't get burnt. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay. All right, judges, off you go. Bye. Bye. We'll see you in a hot minute. Mm -hmm. All right, bakers, for your technical challenge, you will make Jamaican patties. Oh. Yeah. Jamaican patties are a flaky pastry shaped like a half moon and filled with delicious spice ground beef. Mm. 
bakers, you have two hours to make 12 patties. With a hot sauce on the side. The heat is on and I'm sweating. Woo! On your marks. Get set. Bake. Jamaican patties, they're on my baking bucket list, so I'm glad I get to try it here now, live. <laughs> is this gonna be my technical? <laughs> Kyla, they look so delicious. It's making me hungry. I'm so happy to hear that. So what's in the dough? The dough is a bit tricky. They're using a combination of suet and shortening for it. It will be so important to get this beautiful flaky finish that they don't handle it very much, and they chill it for enough time so they get the beautiful shape. Mm. It's so good. We want them to demonstrate that they understand how to use seasonings together in a complimentary way. And they have to make a homemade hot sauce. We've given them the right amount of scotch bonnet peppers, but we haven't told them how many to use, so we'll see just how hot they make it. I mean, I love the heat, but I hope they won't go farther than that. Huh? Oh, I say bring it on. Have you had one of these before? No, I've never had any of those, so... I'm so sorry for your loss, Loic. <laughs> Uh, right now, I am just making my short roast. I've never made pastry in a food processor before in my life, so this is a really unfamiliar way of handling dough for me. Beef suet. Never used beef suet before, so I'm not actually sure what that looks like. <laughs> beef suet is one of those fats that grandmothers use when they bake. Once the dry ingredients are combined, the bakers add turmeric for color. A little bit more turmeric. Well, it's yellow, and the recipe said the yellow dough, so... And water to bring it all together. We need ice water because it keeps all the ingredients cold in the crust and makes it flaky. Feels very wet. This is just a short crust, so it should all be together, but just to that point, because otherwise you'll overwork it. Five minutes in the fridge. Now I am working on my filling. Scallions. I need six whites. The fillings begin with a finely minced combination of flavorful ingredients. Sure. Seems good. What seems to be missing from the recipe? Uh, <laughs> spice quantities. <laughs> oh, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. I do not come from spicy ancestry. So I need to trust the recipe with no instructions. The beef gets flavor and kick from spices like Jamaican curry powder, allspice, and black pepper. I don't do a lot of measurement. I usually just kind of like wing it. I have to go by smell. I believe this is going to be extremely hot on the Scoville scale. So bad with spicy food. I'm not going to be able to taste this. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your tolerance to spice? Probably an eight. Ooh, okay. My husband's a 10. Wow, okay, uh, okay. Which is funny because he is not brown and I am brown, and so people just assume that I'll be the one who eats <laughs> spicier. Yep. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Patty cake, baker's man. Bake me a Jamaican patty as fast as you can. Or in one hour, bakers. Once the dough has chilled, the bakers must divide it equally into 12 pieces. A little bit more. Then roll it out thinly. I know the thickness and size because it's in the recipe for once. There's enough filling on one side of a pastry circle, six inches wide. I'm putting enough filling so that it looks filled. Isn't that what technical officers are about, guessing? And I'm gonna fold it over. So these look really delicious. There might be a slim chance the judges are only getting 11. Can't decide what I want more, this patty or, or a cake plate. <laughs> how do you know how much to fill in something like this? I do not. <laughs> you know, it's got to be kind of nice and hefty because mm -hmm. it's like a meal. I typically eat two, okay. three if I've been drinking. <laughs> so far, so good and pop them in the oven. Feel behind, one and a half to go, and then into the oven for as long as I possibly can. And now I'm making the pepper sauce. Scotch burn peppers. So whatever happens, I'm gonna suffer. I mean, you know enough to wear rubber gloves when you're dealing with a scotch bonnet pepper. Yeah. This is serious business. It's not a good time. Cook. 
wait. Um, okay, I need to get my hot sauce simmering away. <coughs> I need to be protected from this place. It's hot, but it's not uncomfortable. It should be fine, it's fine. What could go wrong? <laughs> It is very spicy. <laughs> if you say that, imagine what this is for me. Yeah. <laughs> My lips are on fire. I don't think I can taste any flavors anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, Camila. <laughs> Bakers, you have 15 minutes to go. They're cooking. I suspect I need at least 25 minutes in there, and I probably put them in at around then. Crossing my fingers up there. They look good. I'm happy with how they look. I think they're baked all the way through. Were you talking to the patty? Was it like a patty whisper? Hi. Yeah, we're, we're almost there. They are the way they are, and I must come to peace with that. Bakers, you only have two minutes left. They're not ready. I don't think they're going to be ready. <sighs> I am straining myself. I feel like we've been through a lot together. Please bring your Jamaican patties up to the gingham altar and place them behind your photo. The judges are looking for a flaky, tender pastry, a balanced and delicious filling, and a hot sauce with just the right kick. For our first baker, beautiful bake, very consistent. I like how that turmeric, it just glistens, doesn't it? The meat, it's cooked properly. It's a bit flat at the beginning, but it comes stronger toward the end in terms of spices. I think this one definitely needs the sauce. I think the sauce could use a bit more kick to it. Moving to our second baker. The shape looks very nice on these. They look really plump, like there's a lot of filling in there. But you can see on oh, the side. Yeah, it's a bit weak, and it's a result yeah. of not being cooked enough. I actually like the flavors in the filling itself. Let's see how we test with the hot sauce. Ooh. It's very spicy. Yes, it is. <laughs> the hot sauce was reduced so much. Because of that, it's extremely hot and spicy. All right, moving to our third baker. Beautiful shape, very well baked. And we've got a rich, dense, well-blended filling. Yeah, the dough, I think, is really flaky, really nice. The filling has good flavor, good blend of spices. Let's see how it tastes with the hot sauce. I would say it's erring on the side of not spicy enough. However, I think it has a nice overall flavor. Moving to our fourth baker. A bit inconsistent in the shape. Yeah, and quite a bit of transparency, so you can see that the filling is trying to come through where it's not cooked. Quite a bit of flavor coming through there, but it's just a bit dry. Also, the sauce has an oily texture. And it needs a little more spice. All right, to our last baker. And you can see there's just too much marbling, so you know that it's not cooked through. Definitely. I mean, the dough actually is almost raw on the bottom. Yeah, the filling also needs more cooking time. It's a bit too wet. The sauce is lacking texture. It's a bit split, as you can see on the plate. But it has a nice, strong kick to it. Kyla and Bruno will now rank the patties from bottom to top. In fifth place, whose are these? Candace, not enough baking, and your filling was too wet. And in fourth place, Andrew, also needed more baking time, and the filling was dry. And in third place, whose are these? Heather, also needed more baking, but your flavors were good. And in second place, Camilla, well baked, just needed a bit more spice. I couldn't. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and in first place. First in the technical, I'm feeling ecstatic. I just want to soak it all in like a rasmalai sponge. I'm 
embarrassed. It didn't go the way I had hoped. So from here, I'm just gonna focus on my next showstopper bake. And I just wanna make the job of the judges as hard as possible. It's our first ever Spice Week. Where do our bakers stand? Candice and Andrew nailed it in the signature. And then they hand up at the bottom two spots on the technical. It's incredible. Louis came into the week as our star baker, and I think he struggled the most in that signature challenge. And what about Heather? On the signature, she was kind of on the lower part, finishing third in the technical. At this point, it's kind of middle ground. Everything rides on a, on a showstopper. Bakers, welcome to your showstopper. The only challenge that stands between you and the semifinals. Spicy. Today, you will build an architectural marvel made entirely out of spice cookies. It could be a structure you've been to, one you've admired from afar, heck, it can be one you've imagined. Just make it grand, make it sturdy, and make it delicious. Bakers, you have four hours to make the judges marvel. On your marks. Get set. Bake. It's Spice Week's showstopper. <laughs> the talent in this tent is just really, really good, so everything has to go well if I want to make it to the semifinals. Our showstopper this week is a spiced cookie architectural wonder. We are expecting a lot from our bakers. Like a lot, like a lot. I am nervous about all of it. It's four hours and I need three hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. I'm excited to see if I finish. <laughs> The bakers are going to have to make a lot of cookies for this architectural wonder. I'm definitely going to need more flour. They need to have something that obviously has lots of spice flavors, but it also has to be crisp enough to be able to support their whole design idea. Nothing can go wrong, nothing can go wrong. The baker's marvelous architectural creations. Where are my tools today? must be formed from two distinct types of spice-forward cookie. You know, the way to successfully bring spices out is to put uh, more, more. Right now, I'm putting together my orange spice cookie uh, with some pink peppercorn and clove. This is the base of the whole design. This is my snickerdoodle-inspired cookie. Our family does, like, every Christmas we set aside a couple days and we do, like, ridiculous cookie sculptures. We get a little out of hand. Heather will attempt to have a potion shop made from snickerdoodles nestled in the branches of a German spiced gingerbread tree. Does it make you nervous for today? Of course it makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's on the line today, uh -huh. so. One second for breathing. <laughs> okay, that was it. <laughs> Let's roll some cookies. Okay. Right now I am working on Earl Grey cardamom sugar cookies. This is the floor of my structure. What are you making? I am making a Dutch windmill tower. Ooh. Yeah. Andrew, I'm a big fan. Oh, the there we go. As an ode to his Dutch heritage, Andrew was creating a windmill complete with anise cookie sails atop a chocolate gingerbread kanzakaki base. You're using the kanzakaki mold, but you're making a chocolate gingerbread. Yes. It's almost like it's chewier. Okay. But as long as the baking is properly done, it holds holds its structure quite well. So as long as the baking is properly the, done. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, easier said than done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I am cutting shapes. Precision is quite important, both because I need the pieces to fit together and also because it's been a recurring comment from the judges that I'm lacking precision. All the bakers will need to be precise in their cutting if they want their structure to stand. I am making a ship. I have cut uh, at least like 40 different shapes. When I first met my partner, uh, one of our first projects together was actually to renovate a boat, and we survived that test. But we did learn a lot about precision, and mostly communication. Lowick will need to remember all those past lessons in building a fully 3D ship with pink peppercorn sails and a hull fashioned from apricot fennel lebkuchen. The hull is made of the Lebkuchen because okay. it's kind of like plain key and uh, okay. has a bit of chewiness okay. so I can bend them. I'm just trying to imagine how you're going to literally hang sails. The sails are actually baked on a baguette pan like this. And once yeah. they are sturdy, they are uh, glued to the mast. Okay, well, you got to sail into the semi-final. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say farewell, mate. 
sifting, are we, Candace? Sifting, <laughs> sifting. This is my second dough that I'm making now. What is the structure going to be today? The skyline of the city of Toronto, and then... I live there. You know, I'm from Brampton now, but I grew up in Toronto. I work in Toronto. What do you do? I help people solve their IT problems. <laughs> <laughs> is it a lot of just plug it in, plug it back in? Surprisingly, turning it off and turning it on yeah. uh, solves a lot of problems. <laughs> Candace's orange clove sun will be the backdrop for the maple gingerbread Toronto skyline as a tribute to the city she loves. And your raccoons? No, 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 no. no raccoons, no traffic. Wow. It's my ideal city the of ideal Toronto. Toronto. Nice. <laughs> so it's my second type of cookie, black pepper and cinnamon lace cookie. The Baker's Cookie assembly line continues. So I'm just cutting out my anise cookie. As one batch comes out... Just hoping that they're baked through. Oh, hotness! Oh, my God. Oh, shoot. Another goes in. Well, I would like the baseball stadium to be <laughs> cool when it comes out. That's all I need. How's it going, Kimina? Mm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a timing. Well. <laughs> Are you trimming post-oven? Yes. It helps keep my structure exactly how I want it. Camila is using Earl Grey cardamom cookies and lace cookies covered in spicy tempered chocolate to recreate a classical Colombian balcony. Well, it's a very iconic thing back home. Like most old cities have that. Um, and they're very colorful and fun. Um, so are yours going to be colorful and fun? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Bakers, you have two hours left. I got a little porch roof. Some supports, and I'm making icing, getting ready to decorate them like as they cool down. I am making some Swiss meringue buttercream with cinnamon. I want every element that I put in front of the judges to have spice in it. <laughs> Lies, you're not spicing your caramel. <laughs> I'm not spicing my caramel. With the final building materials being prepared, Ooh, this is a blue blue. The start of construction is looming. The assembly is definitely the trickiest part. That's the big question of the day, huh? Who's gonna get the first caramel burn? Oh, <laughs> me. Yes. Probably. You. Oh, God. Oh. It's fine. This is extra. We'll make it work. It is time to start building my Kronzakaka. I'm gonna do my best because I want to get to the semifinals. I am starting to build. Oh, this is not flooding. This is me treating royal icing like it's plaster. As much as I can, I'm doing a mix of precise and fast. Behind, but uh, it's time. It's time to get it done. One hour left. Please just work. It's so humid that the royal icing isn't setting, so it's dripping down. Be very careful and assemble with care and precision. It's all coming together. Nothing that caramel can fix. I am shaving off a bit of my cookie so it'll fit perfectly right here. Oh. Please just work. Please just work. It is not building time. It is repairing time. So my tree broke because it wasn't baked the way I hoped for. I'm just adding the roof of my house. What is this glue you're using for the ship? I am using caramel. Uh, okay. This is why sometimes you hear, oh, uh, and we suffer. The pirate life is a life of suffering, you know, like. Mm. <laughs> 
Bakers, you have five minutes left. Oh my God. Just stay. Okay. I'm making tulips. <laughs> Stop shaking. It's so far from finished. Ugh. off your architectural marvels. Woo! Great job, Bakers! Great job! Now, the judges will explore the Bakers' architectural marvels. Camila, it looks like an antique dollhouse. I've actually never been to Colombia, but now I want to go just to go and see these in real life. And very realistic. Yeah. Your glass, it does have an antique quality mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. However, the back looks a bit bare. It reminds me when you go visit a studio in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, those fake, uh, that's the way it reminds me. Let's try the columns. You can definitely test the Earl Grey. It's very nice. Cardamom, it doesn't present itself here. It's non-existent. Now let's try the lace cookie. So it's cooked perfectly. The pepper, you get it kind of at the back yeah. of your mouth. Yeah. So it's like you taste everything in layers. Yeah, a wonderful trip to Colombia. Thank you so much. It's an exceptional display of cookie engineering. Honestly, I can't believe this is cookie. I mean, it's amazing. Shaping the cell using a baguette tray. That was very smart. The architectural components are amazing here, but your flooding is a little bit messy. Yeah, the cells seen a lot of storm, yeah. as we can see. <laughs> so let's try the sugar cookie. I think some of your cookies are a bit overcooked, but a very pleasant flavor of pink peppercorn. So now we're trying the lepkuchen, dry apricot, and... And fennel seeds. And fennel seed. Great texture. Very spice forward, I think in this case, a little bit too much. Okay. But overall, what a design. <laughs> Thank you so much. Heather, it looks very whimsical, like a drawing in a storybook. You know, it's so creative. It's tilting a little bit. I mean, it's amazing that it's holding it all. To be honest with you, you've got so much icing. It's really something that's very top heavy. I've seen we had a little windstorm, so one branch came down. A little nightmare situation. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel that your branches are actually soft. We're trying this gingerbread. I mean, you get all the flavor we need. It's nice, well-rounded, but the cookie needs a bit more cooking time. It's quite soft. It's a bit tacky. And then the treehouse. Is Snickerdoodles a family favorite? It is, <laughs> yeah. Very good flavor, nice lemony. Larger parts probably need more baking yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, I can even stretch the dough. You have actually given us two worlds. On this side, we have the whole skyline of Toronto. And then when you look to the back, you can see the lands of Tanzania. It's all about a journey. So it's a great display of some of Toronto's landmarks. You can clearly see what they are. But some of the skyline are lacking details. And some of it looks like you could have just trimmed up your edges so we wouldn't have those rough bits. Mm -hmm. So let's try the sugar cookie. Nice maple flavor, but they're a bit undercooked. OK. The spices are coming through. It just needs more baking time. OK, so shall we taste your orange and clove sugar cookie? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that you're getting that spice and the orange is just kind of lifting it all up. Candace, that's a good <laughs> cookie. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Andrew, this windmill, it's amazing. It's just this cookie windmill that just happens to exist in nature. I love it. Yeah, it's very clean. Yeah. It looks like a toy, almost. And somehow incredibly appetizing <laughs> as windmills go. And then you have a beautiful tulip field. Okay. Uh, windmill first? Yeah. Sure. It's well balanced, and there's a beautiful lingering mm -hmm. licorice flavor at the end. That anise just comes through and keeps coming through. Yeah, lovely. 
Okay, so our chocolate gingerbread cronzacocchia. Perfect, a little chewiness, mm -hmm. firmer on the outside. It's actually very complex in flavors. The spices blend really well together. Beautiful showstopper. Lots of details, great use of your time, and just such clean, clean work. Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. So going into the showstopper, things were pretty even. How did this challenge really change the picture? Well, I think it's safe to say that three of the bakers really blew us away. I mean, when you look at what Camila, what Andrew, and what Loic have presented to us, absolutely clean, spectacular work. Is it any clearer as to who the lever is going to be this week? That's not much easier. If you look at Candice, I think her signature was very good. However, her showstopper didn't look finished. I think she struggled, and it shows. Heather actually struggled a little bit in both challenges yesterday and really needed today to come back strong and just show us her best skills. She brought all the ambition, but didn't bring us the execution we needed. I think we really have a lot to talk about here. Bakers, you brought flavor and heat to some fantastic Spice Week bakes. But one baker in particular made us oogle and ogle at their architectural marvel. This week's star baker and the person with the guaranteed spot in the semifinals is... Andrew. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so proud of you. Oh. Well done, Andrew. <laughs> You are all truly incredible, talented, and unique bakers. But unfortunately, there was only room for four in the semifinals. The baker going home this week is... Heather. Thank you so much. It's been such an adventure. Thank you, Heather. I did not expect to ever get on the show, let alone make it to week six. It was very much a personal journey for me. Um, my like fear and anxiety has always stood between me and, and just having fun and enjoying life. So I'm really proud of myself that I just pushed through that. Congratulations. I'm Star Baker. I am over the moon it just seemed so out of reach for so long and just lately things have just been falling into place and at least i can show that i can bake things fully <laughs> next time it's semi-finals the bakers push for a spot in the finale we started as thin and all over like less than half of that with pretty patisserie i love pretty things <laughs> who will hold firm perfection is important
In the quiet of the night, we find our peace The melody of stars above sleepy Chill and love, we let the worries go In this musical embrace, our hearts aglow Down to bold dreams where time stands still In the chill step flow, we find our thrill Soft piano keys and mellow vibe With every note we come alive Low feet whispers in the dream. Chill and love, we let the worries go 
In this musical embrace, our hearts are glow. Down the pole, dreams where time stands still. In the chill step flow, we find our thrill. And it goes a distant holiday. We find our sanctuary where we long to be. Love it just stepping down to no command. In this harmony, our souls entwine. Chilling low, we let the worries go. In this musical embrace, our hearts are glow. Down the pole, dreams where time stands still. In the chill step flow, we find our thrill. As the night embraces. Thank you. 